Hello everyone, Clifford is here, and today I want to talk about something very interesting that has just happened. So, as I'm sure many gamers, PC gamers, are aware of, um, Microsoft has been working on the Halo Master Chief Collection for PC. And today they finally 100% confirmed Halo MCC is coming to PC. This did not surprise me, um, but what did surprise me a lot was the fact that they're releasing it on Steam. Now, I'll tell you why I think that's really suspicious. So, Windows 10, right? Let's look at Windows 10 a little bit. It is Microsoft moving towards a sort of operating system as a service model. You no longer control your operating system. I mean, I'd make the argument that there has never been a version of Windows where the user was completely in control of their operating system, but they are taking away more and more options and more and more control. And honestly, this is what prompted me to switch to Linux in the first place. Uh, and I couldn't have been happier with the decision. So, yeah, Windows 10 is moving towards this sort of operating system as a service model, and they have signalled that they plan to phase out Win32 architecture. So, you know, when you install a program in Windows, you typically go online, you download an .exe file, and you double-click it and run it. Is I'm not actually sure if there are currently versions of Windows 10 that don't allow you to do that, but that is definitely something that they are going to do, at the very least. In fact, I'm going to look it up very quickly. Um... Windows 10. But, you know, this is still another great example of why it's not a good idea to let Microsoft have total control of your operating system because they will publish bad updates that break shit and you have to wait for Microsoft to recognize the issue and fix it. Whereas on Linux, it's, you know, it's, everything is a community effort. Um, as soon as an issue has been recognized by multiple users, the devs are made aware of it and they immediately start working on a fix. Whereas Microsoft can be completely dark about whether or not they are working on a fix at all. And then I'm sure you'll remember the whole thing with the Windows 10 update that quite literally deleted the entire user folder. Um, just completely destroying all sorts of important data for many, many users. Um, you know, that kind of shit is not fucking on. And what's worse is the fact that you're paying to be fucked like this. So, yeah, that's why I'm a Linux user, and that's why I think everybody should be a Linux user, regardless of experience or technical ability. There is a distro out there for everyone. And the less people that use Windows, the less influence and the less power Microsoft has over the whole technology ecosystem in general. So, there you go. That's my reasoning for using Linux. Now, let's get back to the Master Chief Collection. So, why are Windows, why are Microsoft going for this whole sort of store model, phasing out Win32 and everything? It's so that they can have control over what apps you install. They want to make it so you can only install apps from the Windows Store using the UWP architecture. And of course Microsoft have complete control over the store. They can dictate what apps are on the store and what apps are not. So, imagine if one day Microsoft phased out Win32 support completely and refused to allow Steam on the Windows Store because they're in direct competition with Xbox Live. That is the nightmare scenario that prompted Proton, otherwise known as Steam Play, otherwise known as you know Windows game compatibility on the Linux Steam client. That exists because Valve foresaw the situation where 
they could no longer distribute the Steam client on Windows 10. And of course, every gamer uses Windows 10 because Windows is the only gaming operating system, right? So they're like, fuck it, let's make Linux the gaming operating system. And let's start by making as many Windows games as possible that are already on the Steam store. Make them work out of the box without any configuration, without any fucking around on Linux. And that is what Proton is, and they're doing a fucking awesome job with it. Now, Master Chief Collection is coming to Steam. So, you, that seems like a kind of, you know, a hole in that whole argument that I just made. You know, if they're really trying to kill Steam, why would they release Master Chief Collection on Steam? The most anticipated PC game that Microsoft has ever released, without a doubt. People have been begging for Halo 3 on PC for over a decade now. And we're finally getting an official, not just Halo 3 on PC, but a Halo 3 remaster on PC with updated graphics. And I assume it has updated physics as well. And we can finally play one of the greatest FPS games ever made with a keyboard and mouse, the way it's supposed to be fucking played. I don't know if you've ever tried playing a fucking FPS with a controller, but it's just the worst experience in the world. So, yeah. I gotta say, e even me, with my scepticism that I'm about to explain, I'm kind of, you know, huh, Halo 3 on PC with keyboard and mouse support. That sounds kind of awesome, right? But here's where things break down. Now, first of all, <laughs> Microsoft have a history. They have a hell of a history. They do things that seem good, and they say these these things about you know committing to to PC gaming, um, and then their actions show their true intentions. So if you remember Windows Vista with Xbox Live support. They were like, oh, games for Windows Live, or, you know, Xbox Live on PC, basically. You know, they were like, yep, we're, we're, we're committing to PC gaming. We're going to give you this this platform, and we're going to release a bunch of games on it, and it's going to be Microsoft committing to PC gaming, and it's going to be awesome, right? And you know what the fucking result of that was. Games for Windows Live is fucking cancer, and everyone knows it. So... You know, and that's just one example. I won't go into every example. You can research it yourself. There is a long, well-documented history of Microsoft committing to PC gaming and then failing to deliver. Another thing that Microsoft does is this thing called EEE. -E -E. It's called Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. It is an internal term used within the company to describe this tactic where if there is a piece of technology or, or a company or something they want to own or something they want to destroy first they embrace it so uh, let's take an example github right they embrace github they publish a lot of code on github they contribute lots of open source code and they publish it on github right then they extend they, they go further with it they really commit to publishing a lot of open source code on GitHub, and they even have some projects that support Linux. And then extinguish is the final step. They bought GitHub, and the result was a lot of developers jump ship to GitLab because they first saw that Microsoft were going to start getting egregious with their, their GitHub ownership. Now, I, I've yet to see a complete apocalypse on GitHub. But it's something that, you know, it's, it's not paranoid to anticipate it. It's something that they've done before. And you can look it up. Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. There's, a, there's an entire Wikipedia article on Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. And you can read it for yourself. It's some fucking shady shit. So, Master Chief Collection on Steam... Is this Embrace, Extend, Extinguish? I think so. 
here's one thing that tips me off. If you look at the Steam Store page, which is currently up, it says, requires a third-party Xbox Live account. Now, there is the Xbox Live app on Windows 10, isn't there? So, I think we can quite safely assume that you know, whether you're buying it on the Microsoft Store or on Steam, it's going to require Windows 10, right? And it's going to require an Xbox Live account. Now, I will not be surprised if this turns out to be a sort of you play situation where you launch the game on Steam and then that launches another client, the Xbox Live client, which of course you can't simply download and run an XE of the Xbox Live client, you need Windows 10. It's, you know, it's something that's baked into the operating system. It's a UWP app that comes with Windows 10, it's baked in, and the only way you can run it is if you run Windows 10. So that's the first thing. If, even if you're buying Master Chief Collection on Steam, I am, you know, putting my cards on the table, I'm saying, you are going to need Windows 10 for this. I'll be very, very surprised if there is support for older versions of Windows. But even if there is older su uh, support for older versions of Windows, that, is, I would presume, is going to require them to release a Win32 Xbox Live client. I don't see them doing that. They're going balls deep with Windows 10. They want everybody to switch to Windows 10. And it's quite obvious to me why. They talk about, oh, it's about security. It's, you know, if everyone's on the same Windows 10 platform, then we can make sure that everybody is secure, um, except, you know, Windows security updates speak for themselves. So that's one thing. It, you know, the talk about security, it's obviously about harvesting user data. It's all about the telemetry uh, and advertising as well. You know, they bake ads into the start menu now. If you install a fresh copy of Windows 10, you've got Candy Crush Saga already installed on your PC, right? Fuck that. That is disgusting behaviour. Fuck you, Microsoft, you absolute disgusting rancid cunts so yeah so i think master chief collection on steam you're going to need windows 10 because you're going to need to run the xbox live client and this is also going to mean that the game's not going to work on proton valve's new you know poster child for for linux gaming you know not being able to run the most anticipated pc game ever released by Microsoft, that's not going to be good PR, is it? But the thing is, my, you know, Master Chief Collection will be perfectly capable of running on Proton, just like many games are very much capable of running on Proton, but don't because of the digital rights management that's baked into them. You know, you play games, don't run on Proton. Not because the games can't run and whine, but because you play can't run and whine. If you remove Uplay from the equation, the game can run fine. And this has been documented. People have figured out ways to, I think, you know, bypass Uplay with Wine and, and get Ubisoft games running in Wine. So that's proof that they can run on Proton, but the Uplay component is what's getting in the way. And Master Chief Collection, I am going to wager, will not run on Proton. I mean, because first of all, I think it's going to be DirectX 12 exclusive, just to further ensure that you absolutely need Windows 10. I'm taking an aside here because as I was editing this video, I came across a second very, very interesting piece of news from Microsoft. It is right here somewhere give me a second from the microsoft developer blog the directx developer blog right here world of warcraft uses directx 12 running on windows 7. so blizzard have added directx 12 support to world of warcraft um back in late 2018. now 
as everyone knows, DirectX 12 can only run on Windows 10, according to Microsoft. Well, not anymore, apparently, because uh, now with the latest World of, Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft patch, DirectX 12 now runs on Windows 7. Now, again, this may seem like a hole in my argument that DirectX 12 is further locking people into Windows 10, but I don't think so. Now this is going a little bit more tinfoil hat than my whole Master Chief argument that I, well, I'm about to continue making after this aside. But here's what I think, right? Windows 7 support ends next year. I'm going to find out the exact date for it, right? Because it's less than a year away, I'm absolutely certain. Um, I know it's in 2020 at least. So Windows 7 end of support. Here's the lifecycle fact sheet from Microsoft website. Um, Windows 7. End of extended support, January 14th, 2020. So, I was right. Less than a year away, Microsoft are officially ending support for Windows 7. So why would they suddenly give Windows 7 DirectX 12 support. Here's what I think, right? World of Warcraft is an insanely popular game. Millions and millions of people play it and have played it for almost two decades at this point, I believe. So... Here's the thing, right? So, DirectX 12 support Windows 7. Awesome, right? But, in January 14th, end of extended support for Windows 7. Not so good. And I think on the day that uh, support ends for Windows 7, you will also see the end of DirectX 12 support on Windows 7. So then, if you want to play World of Warcraft in DirectX 12, you will be asked to upgrade to Windows 10. However, I think it's going to be even worse than that. I think... Blizzard are going to make World of Warcraft DirectX 12 exclusive before the January 14th date, so that when Windows 7 extended support ends, if you want to play World of Warcraft at all, you need to install Windows 10. And you might think, why the fuck would Blizzard do that? Well, why wouldn't they? Blizzard also have a history, a lot like Microsoft. Blizzard have proven time and time again that they are willing to throw their customers under the bus. And what better reason to throw their customers under the bus than, you know, to take a nice tasty bribe from Microsoft? Because don't think for a second that there isn't some fucking money involved in this, that there isn't some shady deal under the table. This, this is Microsoft bribing Blizzard to make one of the most popular online games ever made, a Windows 10 exclusive in 2020. That is my theory. So, it may very well be that Master Chief Collection launches on Steam with DirectX 12 support in Windows 7, but after January 14th, 2020, you will not be able to play it on Windows 7 or Windows 8. You will have to install Windows 10. That is my prediction. We'll see how wrong I am. So, on with the Master Chief Collection part of this video. But, you know, there are projects that are, uh, or maybe just one project, actually, that is, you know, basically trying to do for, you know, DirectX 12 what DXVK does for DirectX 11. That project exists, um, and I'm not quite sure what state it's in at the moment, I certainly don't think it'll be in a state to accurately render Master Chief Collection once that is launched, because, you know, obviously it's a much newer project than DXVK, because DirectX 12 is much newer than DirectX 11. Yeah, those are my concerns. This, this is Microsoft not only, you know, basically waving their dick around in front of Linux users, um, but also waving their dick around in front of Windows 10 and Windows 8 users. Because 
you know, a lot of people, a lot of Windows users don't want to install Windows 10 for the same reasons that I switched to Linux, you know? I don't want to be spied on, I don't want apps being randomly installed to my computer without my permission, I don't want updates to happen out of the fucking blue and re restart my computer without my permission, I want control over my computer. It is my computer, Microsoft, not yours. Not your fucking computer. My fucking computer. And that is why I use Linux. So, obviously, you know, people who still use Windows 7 use it for those same reasons. And they're going to want to play Master Chief Collection. Absolutely. I want to play Master Chief Collection. But... Yeah, you know, if you think I'm going to install Windows 10 on my machine just to play Master Chief Collection, you've got another thing coming. And that is exactly what they expect everyone to do. That is their game plan. Everyone gets on Windows 10 because they need DirectX 12 and they need to run the Xbox Live app to run Master Chief Collection. And then once they're on Windows 10, well, then they might just uh, pull Win32 support. Maybe they'll just, uh, you know, block Steam from being installed. And, you know, it's too late now. Oh, no, I've already installed Windows 10. Guess I'll just use the Windows Store now instead. Uh, it might be a total paranoid conspiracy theory, but, you know, that is what could happen. That is what Valve fears is going to happen. And I think that fear is very much justified. And that fear is exactly why Proton exists. So... Yeah, I'm watching this very closely and very carefully. I smell shite. Microsoft reeks of shite. And this is no different. So, you know, of course, Microsoft could surprise us all. They could remove the Xbox Live requirement. They could make it DirectX 11. They could make it Win32. And... So, you know, it may run on Proton on day one. They could surprise us all, you know? I believe even a company as evil as Microsoft can eventually have a change of heart. But I don't think this is it. I think this is, you know, the next phase in their attempt to completely dominate the, the PC gaming market. Um which is part of their game plan to completely dominate the whole PC market. So, those are my thoughts and concerns. Um, I would say no matter how hype you are about the Master Chief Collection, no matter how much you're anticipating it, at the very least, wait for it to launch. Do not pre-order this game, because you don't know what you're paying for until it's out there in the wild. You don't know if you're going to click play on Steam and then it's going to open the Microsoft store for you. You don't know what it's going to fucking ask you to do to, you know, for you to gain access to the game that you've paid for and so desperately want to play. This is a fucking Trojan horse. I am absolutely certain of it. And I really, really, really want to be proven wrong but I don't think I will be. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, thanks for watching, and switch to Linux. Good night.